Hello everyone and welcome back to the second part of painting the camera roll and we'll be doing the second roll today. Let's get started. So first I'm mixing a very light blue color for the sky and I'm going to put down this color from the top all the way to about halfway of the frame and then I'm going to add more white to my blue to make it even lighter and adding that as we go lower and below that I'm mixing kind of like a very light skin tone color for the bottom part where it is you know the like sunset there's still a little bit of the warm of the sun uh, in the sky in that area For the road color, I'm mixing in purple with a little bit of ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna to desaturate that. The color I'm getting is a little bit darker than the reference photo because I want that road to be slightly more saturated and just a little bit more uh, of the focus compared to the reference photo where it's pretty light. And for the sidewalk, I'm also adding more burnt sienna and make it slightly more saturated and a little bit darker than the reference photo. These colors are just, you know, personal choices. Of course, if you want to make it the same color as the reference photo, please go ahead. There isn't really any right and wrong in this. It's just whatever that make it look better to you. And as I'm waiting for the bottom part to dry, I'm mixing also a very light skin tone color but is lean toward a little bit more red and pink compared to the bottom of the sky and I'm gonna use this color to add in a cloud or the lightest part of the cloud and then afterward we're going to mix a little bit more desaturated purple bluish color for the shadow part of the cloud As I start working on the cloud, you will see that some part of it may start drying first while the other one is still wet and it will look a little bit patchy and in this time make sure that if you want to fix something, wait for everything to dry first before going in and fixing them and then only to realize when they dry, they sometimes dry a different color and your fix may need to be fixed again. So. If you see like you know like your stroke look a little bit patchy, it's not like evenly colored, it could be because you know the paint is drying, so just wait a little bit for everything to dry before you going in and adding more layer on top of them. Now for the car, I'm just starting out adding the silhouette of the car which is kind of like just two rectangle on top of each other. A little bit smaller one on the top and a little bit bigger one on the bottom. And I'm going to wait for that layer to dry before adding more stuff on top of the car. In the meantime, I'm going back in to add a little bit more texture to the road and the sidewalk. Right now I'm mixing a green color for the tree from far away 
And since these three are pretty far from us, I'm not going to add a lot more details to them. I'm just going to put down pretty much a mid-tone color to map out their silhouette. And then after that, I'm adding a darker green for the shadow area and that will be all. And just like the tree, our car is going to be pretty small so we don't want to crowd it, it with too much details. So I'm just adding general big shape, you know, like another darker rectangle to indicate where the back windshield is. And a little bit of dark color at the bottom of the car to indicate the shadow and the wheels. A lot of complicated objects that we see in our daily life can pretty much boil down to very basic shape. For example, on this car, all I've been using is some rectangle and some trapezoid. I hope I pronounced that word correctly. But yeah, I'm just some trapezoid for the windshield, some rectangle for the body of the car, and the tail lights also just two red rectangle on both sides. And lastly, I'm just adding a little bit of highlight on the tree and we have our first painting finished. For the second painting, I'm starting out by mapping in the brick wall of this house with a burnt sienna color mixed with some primary red. And I apologize that my camera tripod is kind of moving, tilting toward a little bit. And it's yeah, I fix it after this point. Then I'm adding kind of like a purple mixed with burnt sienna ish for the bottom part. And for the window, I'm starting out with a pretty dark color of indigo mixed with ultramarine blue and adding a little bit of burnt sienna into that to desaturate the blue. And since this is the first layer, everything is pretty transparent and pretty thin. So now I'm going back in with a pretty much same mixture of color, adding a little different hue, or maybe a little bit red, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. And I'm mixing a thicker mixture, in this case to cover the brick wall and also just adding different texture and as you can see some area may look a little bit more purple while the other one may look a little bit more red um, i like to vary my color on something that may look like it's just you know one big block of color to make the painting look slightly more interesting After that, I'm also going to darken the ground below with some darker purple and also the window with a darker blue. And I'm also adding a little bit of uh, white on the top part to indicate some reflection on the window. Now I'm going back in with a lighter color and a smaller brush to add in the uh, indication of the separation between each of the brick. On the side of the wall, these lines will kind of converge onto a pretty far point on the left hand side. 
and on the front side of this wall everything would be pretty much a horizontal line you will see that I started out with my line kind of crooked and then I realized that perspective is a little wrong so I fixed them and make both the bottom part uh, of the wall and also the brick line a little bit more horizontal After that, I'm using a darker color and going back in, adding a little bit more darker uh, color and shadow on each of the brick to make them pop out a little bit more. Now I'm going to add in the base color for uh, all the, the leaf and the vines and uh, because this is like almost like our fourth layer, the mixture of green I mix will be pretty thick to make sure that it actually stay opaquely on top of the brick wall underneath it. After blocking in the silhouette of those plants, I'm mixing a darker green to go back in and add in the shadow for them. Then while I wait for that green layer to try, I'm going back and work on the window by uh, grabbing a lighter blue to add in some of the uh, frame of the window and also some of the texture for the blind behind it. Then I'm also going back in with a darker blue, almost like a blackish color to indicate the shadow and make the window look a little bit more three-dimensional. Then I'm also adding a little bit more shadow and a darker purple on the ground. And now that I'm sure that the tree has fully dried, I'm going back in and add some brush stroke that indicate a little bit uh, more details, more leaf shook onto this tree with a lighter green color. And the last step is just mixing a lighter color for everything and just add some highlight onto them. So I'm doing that for the tree right now, but after I finish with the tree, I'm going to move on to add a little bit more highlight on both the windowsill and a little bit on the brick wall and the ground underneath it. Around this point, I realized that my highlight is still not bright enough for, to be a highlight. So I'm going back in with an additional layer to make everything even lighter. And here our second painting. 
My third painting has a pretty similar color scheme compared to the second one. Before I put down the sky, I'm actually applying some clean water to that area just so I can get a smoother transition between the sky and the cloud. The brick wall is pretty much the same color, a very burnt sienna-ish mixed with a little bit of red. And just like the second painting, I'm blocking in a very thin and transparent layer at first. And after that, I'm going in with a thicker mixture and changing the hue of this color as I go, making it sometimes a little bit more purple and sometimes a little bit more red to make the uh, wall color look slightly more interesting. After I finish that, unlike the second painting where I go in and paint the line for the separation of the brick, for this one I'm just using a lighter color and I'm also going back in again with a darker color just to indicate where uh, each of the brick is. And I'm not you know, gonna paint every single brick, I'm just adding some brush stroke in the direction of the brick orientation to create some texture as an indication of where these brick are on the wall. Here I'm mixing a green color to start adding the vine and the plants that are going on to this building. I'm just focusing on blocking in the big area, marking down where they are going to be, and focusing on the silhouette of these vines and plants as a big structure. After that, I'm going with a darker color to add some shadow to the building and also to darken some of the top part where the roof is. To give it a little bit more definition, as you can see right now, our building is kind of missing, you know, that hinged top part uh, on the right hand side. And then we are going also to mix a darker green color to add a little bit of darker shadow onto this vine, especially at the bottom part of them. Now after all that shadow, I'm actually going in with the mid-tone color. And 
I'm mixing this green that is a lot lighter than our shadow green but it's not too too light that would make it a highlight. So as you can see the green I'm mixing is a little bit leaning toward more of a blue tone compared to our reference photo where it's slightly more yellowish and the reason for that is because I have made the building a lot more saturated and a lot more red compared to, a compared to the reference photo and I just like that a little bit better but in order to I guess compensate for that very warm color I'm trying to make the leaf a little bit more cool to contrast with that red. And then after that, we're just mixing a lighter green color, now adding a little bit more yellow to this for the lighter part of the leaf and also for the highlight. And this final part of the painting would conclude our video for today. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you also ended up trying to paint your own camera roll and which type of painting, what object or what scenery that you like painting the best. Other than that, um, enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you all next time. Bye!